In this video, I'll tell you how you can explore lucid dreaming effectively, safely, and fast. Because there's a lot of information out there, most of it's nonsense, and you just, you're just not going to be able to lucid dream if you follow most of the advice on YouTube. So I'll explain in this video how to learn it, how to practice it, and how to really explore lucid dreaming and kind of understand how it works. So you might be new here, if not, then that's fine. Basically, if you are new here, lucid dreaming is where you become aware of your dreams while you're still in them. So it means you can control them, you can do whatever you want, experience your fantasies, fly around like a superhero, and really literally do anything. Anything you can imagine, you can do. If you don't know how to lucid dream, I will explain briefly how you can, the habits you can build that will let you start lucid dreaming. But I do have many other videos on tutorials, techniques, and things like that on my channel. So make sure to subscribe and you know check those out. So the first way, the first kind of foundation of exploring lucid dreaming is reality checks. You need to be doing what's called reality tests, which is where you essentially just test whether you're dreaming or not. And the way you do this is you perform an action. So I'll take one as an example. You try and push your finger through your palm. If it goes through, you're dreaming. If it doesn't, you are awake. And basically, as you're doing that reality test, you need to really ask yourself and really clearly think about it, you know, and ask yourself, am I dreaming or not? The next part of foundation number one is sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene means how well you are sleeping. How reliably and regularly are you sleeping? Are you going to bed at the same time every night? Are you waking up at the same time? Do you feel rested, refreshed? Do you wake up at all during the night? Things like that. Okay, this factors into sleep hygiene and you really need to be having a good level of sleep hygiene. You need to be sleeping well in order to lucid dream. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but a lot of people tend to forget that. The next part, and we're still on foundation principle number one, is to be able to remember your dreams. If you can't actually remember what you're dreaming, then of course you're never going to be able to lucid dream. Or if you do, you won't remember it, so it's kind of pointless. You need to be remembering your dreams. The best way of doing this is just to start writing something down in your dream journal. You can just write down anything, literally, just as long as you write down something. Like, for example, if you don't remember anything, that's fine. You can just write down no dreams recalled. Okay, so the next foundational pillar, okay, so if that's the first one, and, and it covers reality check, sleep hygiene, and dream recall. That's like all in one. That's the foundation number one. The foundational pillar number two is based on tracking. You need to be analytical about this. I know that sounds kind of boring, but you need to be tracking what works and what doesn't work. The best way of doing this is you obviously should be keeping a dream journal, right? I hope you are. And in that journal, you should be writing down the techniques you used, the time you went to bed, things like that. You can automate some of this if you have a sleep device like an aura ring or a Fitbit or something. You can set up automations, but really it's not that difficult. All you need to do is write down when you went to bed, when you woke up. You need to write down what techniques you used, if any, and just some notes about the day. So you can, so when you look back on it, you can say, right, this was the day I went to the spa or the gym, or this was the day I did 20,000 steps instead of 10,000 steps. And that way you can look back at it. And if you did lucid dream on a certain day, you can see maybe why you lucid dreamed. Or you can see what things might have made it easier. This step is actually quite personal. You know, it's down to you to decide what things need to go in the journal and what things are not that important. Personally, for me, I write things like what time I went to bed and slept, if I was lucid or not, the technique I used, and any interesting or useful notes about the day. Like, did I do anything out of the ordinary? Did I do anything that might be considered strange or unusual? The next foundational pillar, okay, to explore your streaming is that you need to be sleeping consistently. You need to be sleeping at the same time. And I know this ties into sleep hygiene, but I want to emphasize this even more because it's really important. You need to be sleeping consistently. Going to bed at roughly the same time, waking up at roughly the same time, within about 15 minutes of variance. And even on the weekends, even if you're doing something, even if you're social, try as much as you can to stick to it. And this is a really important tip. If you miss one of the times, right? Let's say if you miss one of the times and you actually end up going to bed later than you should do, that's fine, but you need to stick to the morning wake up time even if you feel tired, because then you're going, to feel, you're going to feel tired during the next day, and that's going to help you fall asleep on time the following night. What a lot of people do is they'll, let's say they miss their sleep time, they go to bed at 1am, and then the next morning they feel tired, so they sleep in until 9am, and then because they've slept in at 9am, the next night they don't feel tired until 1am again, and the cycle just keeps repeating. So you need to really keep some structure to this, like stick to it. And then when you see what actually works for you, you need to really double down on that. If you see that a specific technique always gives you a lucid dream. Or if you see that one type of reality check shows up in your dreams more often than other ones, you need to double down on that and do more of that because that's what actually works for you. It's a very unique thing. And this is essentially like me coaching you because a co what a coach would do 
is they would basically tell you to try a bunch of different techniques and, and reality checks and methods and timings and things like that and track it all on a journal or, you know, keep coming back and telling them. And then the, co the, the sleep coach or the lucid dreaming coach would essentially t tell you or, you know, highlight to you which things worked and which things didn't and tell you to do more of those things that worked. You can do this yourself. You can almost coach yourself with this stuff. Just make a list of, you know, keep, keep a journal, make a list of the things that made the biggest difference for you and then just do those things more often. It's quite simple when you break it down like that. I'd love for you to comment your biggest lucid dreaming hack or just share something. I'll try and reply to everybody.